shall see the salvation of God. The scripture reading this afternoon will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, starting at the 4th verse, ending at the 11th verse. And the word of God reads, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but in the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit of utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit. To another faith, by the same spirit, to another gifts of the healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to the other interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For the word of God, for the people of God. Thank Thank you, God. God. We will not have a presentation of the preacher. The preacher this evening will be our very own Reverend Miracle Royal. Serves as the assistant pastor, minister of Christian education, and the first woman assistant pastor at the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Arlington, Virginia. Amen. Even though she is a native of Suffolk, Virginia, she lives in Washington, D.C. For the past 10 years, she holds a degree from Howard University yes. and Wesley Theological Seminary. She previously serves as the director of young adult and college outreach ministries at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., where she was licensed and ordained to the gospel ministry. She is a general editor and contributing writer to the devotional book entitled Praying with Power, a devotional guide to the Lord's Prayer. She currently serves as the Progressive National Baptist Convention President for the young adults of the Eastern Region. After the selection rendered by the by the Howard University Divinity School Music Ministry, the voice that we will hear is none other than Reverend Miracle Gloria. Hello, I have been crucified with Christ. Thank you. 
that which they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. More specifically, let's go to Howard University. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's so good to be home. Yes. Amen. I give God praise for being here, for the invitation, and I give God praise for all of you, my brothers and sisters, who thought it not robbery to gather together on this evening. I will not be before you long, um, but I will be um, talking a little bit from the text that was read, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. And since it was already read, I will not um, reread it in its entirety. Um, but I will lift up just a few verses. I looked up verses 4 and 4 through 6 that says, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Won't you take a moment and pray with me? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Lord, let my will be lost in thy. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For the time that is ours, I would like to share from the thoughts. You must not know about me. Uh, Look at your neighbor and say, you must not know, you must not know about me. About me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I assume that there's at least one person here that has heard that song by Beyonce entitled, You Must Not Know About Me. Can I, can I get a witness to anybody yes. in this room? Yes. And I'm going to take a different view on this song for any persons in here that uh, are affiliated with the Beehive, I apologize if I step on some toes. But I want us to look at these lyrics a little bit. It says, you must not know about me. You must not know about me. I could have another you in a minute. A matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. You must not know about me. You must not know about me. I can have another you by tomorrow. Don't you ever for a second get to thinking that you are irreplaceable. Now, I assume that Sister Beyonce, when she wrote this song, she wrote it talking about the fact that she had been cheated on. However, the reality is that no one is irreplaceable. You cannot replace another human being. The position can be refilled, yes, but that actual human being, the one who only has that set of fingerprints, the one who only has that DNA, that person cannot be replaced. No one can get on your nerves like that person. No one can make you cry like that person. No one can even make you laugh like that individual. No stepmother will ever truly replace your mother. No spouse will ever replace your first love. No one is truly irreplaceable. We all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. We all have different gifts and different callings. And I think when we don't fully operate in that space that we are supposed to be in, then that becomes our downfall. I think when we don't know what our gift is, I think when we don't know what our strengths and our weaknesses are, I think when we don't know what the source of our gifting is and, and whatever gift that we have is actually not for us to keep to ourselves, but it's for the betterment of the community and for the entire world, I think that can be to our detriment. And so whoever Sister Beyonce is writing this, this song to, I don't believe that this person meant to be the way that they were, but they probably just didn't know their gifting. They probably just didn't know what their strength or their weaknesses was. They probably didn't know what situation they were supposed to be in and what situation they were not supposed to be in. Whoever this individual was that Beyonce was talking about, 
that left a mark on her. It, it makes me think about the persons in this world that we tend to we tend to discount or that we tend to want to delete because of their mistakes. Mm. Brian Stevenson said it best. He said, we are all greater than the worst thing that we have ever done. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And this sticks with me because if I'm honest, I know that I'm an imperfect human being. And I would hate for my boss to look at me one day and say, you know what? You're replaceable. I would hate for my fiance to come up to me and tell me because I made a mistake because I forgot to his birthday or something and tell me, you know what, you're replaceable. I would hate for my family or my friends to tell me that I'm replaceable. For those who are in Christ, we have meaning and purpose that is greater than ourselves. And so I want to challenge us a little bit today. I want us to think about how people are treating us and how we are even treating other people because they may not have the same gifting or the same strength that we have. The Apostle Paul even wrote to a church in Corinth that had a similar problem. They were truly having destructive attitudes and destructive behavior that existed in what you may be surprised was a church. But Paul needed to address these issues. There was so much divisiveness. There was divisiveness because there was so much emphasis put on um, honor, so much emphasis put on praise to the fact that you would shame and guilt other people. There was so much emphasis put on praise in this church at Corinth, so much that they had assigned seats at social events that were given to persons who were of greater status or greater statue. Imagine that happening in the church, giving uh, a front row seat to the greatest tithe uh, givers. Imagine giving better seats to those who smelt better than others. Imagine giving better seats to those who had been saved, quote unquote, saved longer, or, or those that you felt were more important. Imagine us doing what the church of Corinth did. Imagine divisiveness based on socioeconomic grounds. Imagine Imagine this divisiveness based on gifting. For in the church in Corinth, there were some who felt that their gifts were better than others. If you could speak in tongues, then you thought that you were higher and mightier and more saved or closer to the divine than someone who did not. In fact, the tradition that I came out of was Pentecostal, I guess. It, they had Baptists on the, on the front, but it wasn't Baptist really in doctrine. It was back the postal or something of the nature, but in that tradition, they taught that even if you didn't speak in tongues, that you weren't even going to heaven. Imagine putting emphasis on different types of gifts when the Bible tells us that there are a variety of gifts but the same spirit. Paul wants us to focus on us enriching the community of God's design. But Paul does this by something that scholars call the theologia crucis. I wasn't the one that was in a Greek class or Latin class, so I hope I pronounced that right for the real scholars in the room. But simply, that is the theology of the cross. And if we don't understand the message of the cross, then it is hard for us to be good Christians. But the cross refuses to conform to human logic and norms in order to measure one's effectiveness. That theology says, I care about the least among us. I care about those who are lost. I care about those who are left out. That theology of the cross says, I love you and I need you to survive. That theology of the cross says, I don't have to compete with you because there's room for all of us in the body of Christ and in the family and the kingdom of God, the theology of the cross. The one that says that God can take a little bit, God can take just a little bit of faith and work miracles. The theology of the cross that says God can take a mess and create a miracle. The theology of the cross is the one that Paul wanted to point the believers in the church of Corinth to. And so the next time you find yourself in your valley situation, the next time you find yourself in a situation that someone is telling you to the left, to the left because of a mistake that you made or because you were in a situation where you didn't recognize your giftedness, the next time you find someone deeming you as worthless or replaceable, you can simply respond to them with Beyonce's own words and say, well, you must not know about me. 
And if someone asks you why you can have the audacity to say you must not know about me, you can tell them just three simple things, and then I'm going to let you all go. And the first thing is that you can tell them, I have a gift. Look at your neighbor and say, I have a gift. I have a gift. And the Greek term for gift is charisma. In other words, it is a benefit with, with which one has been graced. A benefit in which one has been great. In other words, everyone does not have the same gift. You may be graced with the gift or the benefit of being able to stay up late and do an all-nighter and still wake up for your 8 a.m. class and look okay, and others may not. You may be graced with the gift of going into a social setting, a lounge, or what have you, and be in a relationship and still come back home Faithful others may not. Come on now. <laughs> but you need to realize that you do have a gift. And oftentimes it saddens me when I hear some people say that they don't have a gift. Or on the other hand, they say they don't know what their gift is. But all of us have a gift. When I was preparing to get dressed, to go to work, and then come here to be with you all today, I had a very interesting thing happen to me, and I guess it only happened so I could use this as an illustration to share with you all to further this point. But I plugged up my laptop just an hour before I started ironing my suit, and after I finished ironing my suit, I noticed that my laptop was still dead. I said, Lord, my laptop has been on the charger for a whole hour. How is my laptop still dead? So I I, I took the laptop adapter charger out of the socket and I plugged it into another, the socket that was right below it. Because I'm like, Lord, I know this outlet must work because this is the outlet that I use for light at night um, to read before I'm going to sleep. So I know it must work. And it wasn't until I, I switched things around and about and then I realized, what is it that I do differently before I'm about to go to sleep at night that I didn't do when I plugged in this laptop? And I thought about it. I usually flip the light switch. And so I went and I flipped the light switch, and then voila, my laptop started charging. And I was thinking, I'm like, Lord, was my, was my laptop just not, was the, that outlet just not gifted to charge my laptop? Was it only gifted to charge my lamp? I was just so confused. But I realized that, that you just have to make sure that you are connected to the right source to recognize and use the gift that God has been giving you. Sometimes we try to operate and function in capacity and we don't have the strength because we're simply not connected to the source. And so if you understand that today, you won't let people try to tell you that you don't have a gift or your gift isn't good enough just because you may seem a little weak at times. Just take a moment and get connected to the source. Take a moment and get in your prayer closet. Take a moment and get in your word. Take a moment. Sometimes you need to take a nap and recharge. But you do have a gift, but you have to make sure that you are operating in the capacity that it takes for you to fully function in your gift. And I believe whoever this brother was that Beyonce was talking about in this song, they didn't realize the source of their gift. They weren't operating in the capacity in which their gift was strengthened and their gift was, was being sourced. So you need to tell yourself and tell other people, I have a gift. But the second thing you can tell is that your gift comes from God. Look at your neighbor and say, my gift comes from God. My gift comes from God. Verse 6 says, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. My gift comes from God. There is one spirit that produces and works all of these gifts. Whatever your service is, whatever your ministry is, all of it comes from God. And so in other words, you have no right to be jealous of my gift. Because I didn't give it to me. I woke up like this. God is the one that graced me with this gift. You have no reason to be jealous of my gift. And also, I have no reason to take the glory for my gift. Because it is not of my own. It is not of my works. It is God's grace that I am gifted to do what I do. In other words, we should be working in harmony with one another. Whatever work, whatever service it is that God has called you to do, 
recognize that this is what comes from God, and I wish that we would recognize this and we would embrace the gift of partnerships more. Because if I'm gifted to write and you're gifted to proofread, oh, we in business, we can do something. We can do something. We can create a book. If you're gifted to publish and you're gifted to, to illustrate, we got a whole book cover. We can do something. We can work in our gifting if we realize our gift comes from God and not be in a context and, and like the Corinthians be in a, in, a, in a place where we're competing and we're putting people down because their gift does not match our gifting or their gift is not to our liking. You don't know what that individual had to go through to maintain their gift. You don't know the trials and the tribulations they had to go through for God to prune them and to shape them and to mature their gift. And so you have to realize that your gift comes from God. But the third thing that I want us to realize is that you benefit from our gift. And I benefit from your gift. A gift is not for oneself. But the gift is for the common good of community or what is helpful for the community. We have to disassociate this notion of gift being with status or, or gift being with privilege and just focus on the connection between how can this gift help my community? How can this gift make this world a better place? How can this gift help my family? How can this gift help that person that is the least, the lost, and the left out? God, what are you calling me to do with this gift. God, when I when I join the church, God, how are you calling me to use this gift so that this church ministry can grow? God, how are you calling me to use this gift so that my family can feel more connected and my family can flourish into being the best that it can be? God, how are you calling me to use this gift so it can benefit the body of Christ? For, for being honest, all of us have benefited from someone's gift in the room. We have benefited from the gift of our parents for bringing us into this world. We have benefited from Dr. King's gift of having a dream. We have benefited from Sister Rosa Parks' gift of simply knowing how to sit down. We have gifted from Sister Maya, Maya Angelou's gift of simply knowing how to rise. And if we are all being honest, we were gifted from someone else's gift over 2,000 years ago who decided to use their gift for the benefit of someone else, who decided to lay down their life so that we could have life more abundantly. Oh, that person that allowed us to benefit from that gift is no one, no other than the one who is the light itself. No other, no other person but Jesus Christ who allowed his light to shine in the midst of darkness, who allowed himself to suffer and to take
so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 I believe. 
now unto the one that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of this Lord with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. 